Hello, in today's video I'll be checking the car I was asked to check if it's a good purchase. But upon checking I realized this is a good example of why you should always check a car thoroughly before buying. The first thing I noticed is the damage under the passenger rear door. It looks like the vehicle was repaired before or it has rust under the area causing this area to bubble up and crack. And this area near the rear glass you'll notice that the clear coat has become thin and is already beginning to peel. So if you see this, just know that this will spread out more and more over time. Here you'll notice that the wheel wall around the passenger front is missing clips that hold it to the fender. And as I go around the inside of the fender, you'll see that the front part of the wheel wall is missing as well. This is usually indicative that there's been body work done in this area before. And it's something that you should ask the owner about to see if he or she knows. Another thing you'll want to be sure to look at are the gaps between the panels. You want these gaps to be even all the way across. As I continue to walk around the car, I notice that the bumper is slightly sagging here on the driver's side. And as I take a closer look, the retainer that holds the bumper is either broken or missing. And you'll also notice that the driver's side wheel well is missing the inside part of the clips as well. It's starting to seem like this bumper has been removed and possibly repaired. A good way to tell if a door or a fender has ever been removed is to look for the painted bolts that attach the door or fender to the body. If the bolts are still painted without flaking paint, then it's safe to say that they've never been removed. The same goes when you open your hood. You want to look for missing clips or these painted bolts on the fender and the hood to see if they've ever been removed. Now let's watch what happens to a painted bolt as we try to remove it. As you can see, it becomes pretty noticeable that it's been removed. Now for rear panels, you want to look in areas like inside the trunk area for these seams. If a rear panel has ever been removed, these seams here will be a good area to tell if they've ever been replaced. Seeing the trunk liner carpet like this could be indicative of work being done in the rear as well. But I know it has to be removed for rear light bulb replacements. So for now, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt till I check the rear bumper area. On some vehicles, they have wheels where you can get a glimpse of how the brake rotors and the brake pads are. Unfortunately, on this one you can't. But here's an example of one where you can. You want to look at the rotor or disc for smoothness and the brake pads for the amount of material. And on this one you can tell that they're pretty new. You'll also want to take a look at the condition of the tires. These tires look pretty new, but to get a better look, you'll want to turn the wheel all the way to the left or to the right to get a full view of the tire. Now here's a good view of the tire. You'll want to look for even tread wear. You'll have these wear indicator bars that tell you when you should replace your tire. And as you can tell, these still have a good amount of material left. Now's a good time to also look at the suspension. Here you'll want to look for any damage to any of the rubbers which I'll show you here. Because if any of the rubber tears, you'll notice grease covering the area near it. And the grease is what keeps the component working properly. So if you see torn rubbers then it's safe to say that these components will soon have to be replaced. And you'll also want to check things like your brake hoses. And you can't forget the tie rod that's back there. Now we want to look under the engine and transmission. And here we'll be looking for any oil leaks or any sign of anything that may be leaking, broken, or for any gaskets that have recently been replaced. And for any of these checks, you can always just put your camera to record so you don't have to crawl down there and look. The same goes with checking underneath the side of the car. You want to look from the front to the back for any heavy rust on parts that are painted, pen components, or just anything that looks out of the ordinary.
And here I'm looking underneath the rear bumper, looking for any signs that it may have ever been hit, and also looking at the rear suspension for any heavy rust or anything out of the ordinary. Now let's take a look at the engine. The first thing I do is give it a visual look over for anything that doesn't look original or customized. This one seems fine so far except for that battery. One important thing to find out is to know if your car's engine has a timing belt or timing chain, usually indicated by a plastic cover on the front. This one does not. But if it does have a timing belt, you'll want to ask if it's ever been replaced because many people get rid of their car right before they have to do this because it can be expensive in certain vehicles. Sometimes you'll find a sticker that tells you when the timing belt was replaced on the front cover or around the engine bay. Now I check the fluids, starting with the coolant level and the color. This vehicle should have a pinkish orange colored coolant, which it does. Next I check the brake fluid. This one's pretty dirty and it's probably never been replaced. A good way to tell if you may need brakes is to check the brake fluid level. The lower the brake fluid, the more worn out your brake pads might be, unless someone topped it up without doing the brakes. Now I check the engine oil. First checking the oil on the dipstick, wiping off the first mark with a rag, and then I check the level of the oil and the color. The darker the oil is quite indicative that it goes longer between oil changes, meaning less maintenance it gets. But what you don't want to see is anything that looks milky or watery because that's indicative of head gasket problems or head or block damage. Now I remove the oil fill cap to look for any crud. If you see any crud it means that the engine inside is really dirty and has gone too long between oil changes. And that can mean less oil pressure, poor circulation, and potential problems in the future. I do the same with the transmission fluid. You want to check the level and how dark the fluid is. The darker it is means it hasn't gotten much maintenance, and the last thing you want is a transmission problem in the future. So the fluid here looks like it's been replaced recently. It comes in a reddish color. And now you want to smell the fluid for a burnt smell, because that could be indicative of worn internals. What you don't want to see is a dark brown color, because that could mean that it probably hasn't been replaced at all. Now we'll want to look at the battery for any corrosion, a swollen or leaky battery. Corrosion on a positive battery pulse can mean that the battery is being overcharged, while if on a negative it can mean that it is being undercharged. Another thing I like to check are the engine mount. I turn on the car and while holding the brake, I just shift it between reverse and drive, and look for the engine jumping or moving too much. This one has a lot of movement, but it's not too bad. While the car is on, I like to turn on the AC to make sure that the fan works. If your car has two fans, usually one fan will come on, but this one has one fan only, so you can see that it does work. I also like to check the air filter if it only has tabs holding it. Another way to tell how much maintenance is beginning. Now I like to check the radiator and hoses for any swollen hoses or signs that it may be leaking coolant anywhere. It'll have an upper radiator hose and a lower radiator hose. I also check the belts for any cracks or signs of wear. You can usually tell by looking at the inside, that's where a belt will begin showing little cracks. But this one has been replaced pretty recently. Now I use a scan tool to connect to the engine's computer to read any codes or information. This is a diagnostic port, or OBD2 port in this case. It's usually located somewhere under the dash on the driver's side, and you connect the scan tool to get information from the vehicle's computer. But when checking a car, the main things to look for are current codes and any history codes, or any signs that they were just erased. If just erased, it could mean that someone's hiding a code that pops up after a while. So how can one tell? It's easy, you go to the readiness status, if they all say ready, then it means the computer has gone through a full cycle of checks. But when you clear the code, you can see that the readiness status is say not ready. 
Now I like to check the front and rear shocks by bouncing the car up and down. A good shock will stabilize at or before two bounces. A bad shock will bounce more than three times before stabilizing. Now we can go inside the car. I like to check all the buttons, levers, and switches to make sure that they operate. And that includes all the inside door handles and the window switches to make sure that those all operate as well. I check under the floor mats to make sure that they're not hiding holes or really dirty carpets underneath. And you want to check the hazards. And then make sure that the traction control goes on and off. But the car has to be on for that. And you'll want to check the cigarette lighter if that works. And any other ports. And of course you want to make sure that the parking brake works. And now just check the seats for any rips, tears or heavy stains. On the front seats they usually start on the edges or the middle. And you'll want to check to make sure that the headlights work. The turn signals and the brake lights work as well. And I also check to make sure all the knobs work. That the AC works without clicking on and off. If the AC clicks on and off it can mean that it's low on refrigerant. And finally the test drive. The main things you want to test for is that the vehicle drives straight with the steering wheel lined up in the middle. That you don't hear any clunks or abnormal noises while driving. You want to make sure that the tachometer and speedometer work and that you don't notice any lights while driving. And you want to listen for the engine revving up high as you're driving because that could mean that your transmission is having problems shifting. And lastly I can't get over displacement of the gauges. The asking price for this car is $4,999. Private value for this vehicle in good shape is about $5,200. So the listing price isn't too bad, but as a consumer my buying price would be around $4,200. Due to the things that I had to correct and possible hidden problems. It's got 130,000 miles, which is up there, and I prefer to purchase vehicles under 100,000 miles. Due to the fact that components tend to start wearing out above 100,000 miles, it has a lot of things that weren't installed properly. It has missing clips, a panel that's missing, and little things that would need to be corrected. This would be my personal opinion on this vehicle. Well, I hope you guys found this video helpful and informative. If you did, please click that like button to support my video and my channel. And please subscribe if you haven't done so.